Welcome back to Extra Help from Mr. A's channel. Today we're going to be talking about fractions and we're going to be talking about comparing them, representing them, and ordering them. So we don't always talk about whole numbers. A lot of the time we're talking about parts of a whole. And that's where fractions come into play. We see fractions in all sorts of areas. We see them as decimals. We see them as percentages, um, ratios, things like that. They're all ways of representing um, a part of a whole. So when we look at these three whole numbers, 5, 11, and 2, to us who have had much experience with whole numbers, we can easily say what's the biggest 11 followed by 5 is the next biggest, and 2 is the least of those three numbers. But when we look at these three numbers below, it's a little bit more difficult. We've got 2 thirds, 3 quarters, and 7 eighths. Which is the biggest? It's difficult to tell. Um, and so for that reason, we need to figure out how we're going to compare these. Uh, because at the moment, we, it's really difficult to see which one's the biggest. So before we go any further, we do need to go over a little bit of terminology so that you can follow the rest of this tutorial. Basically, a fraction is made up of two parts. We've got the numerator and the denominator. And those are kind of big words. What do they mean? Well, the denominator tells us how many pieces, how many equally sized pieces our whole thing is divided into. Our number, or sorry, our numerator refers to how many of those pieces that we have at any given time. So for example, if I had a pizza, which is the classic fractions example, okay, if I have a pizza and it's divided into four pieces, that would be represented by the denominator. Okay? So assuming that all of these four slices of pizza are the same size, that would say that four would be our denominator because our pizza is divided into one, two, three, four um, portions, equally sized portions. Um, if we were talking about one of those slices, um, so if we're talking one out of four, okay? So we're talking about one out of four equally sized pieces. You might have eaten one, you might have given one away, who knows? Um, so that one in the numerator refers to this individual uh, slice. The four, the denominator, refers to how many slices we have in total, okay? so. It's really important to understand that the denominator is how many equally sized pieces you have at any given time. So here we have two equally sized rectangles. One, you'll notice, is divided into four equally sized pieces. So the denominator for this one is going to be four. However, this rectangle, which is the exact same size, is divided into three smaller rectangles, which would indicate that its denominator is going to be in thirds. So although the whole thing, we can call it a rectangle, we can call it a chocolate bar, um, that's divided into differently sized slices. Now you'll notice that this slice, this slice, this slice, and this slice, they're all the same size compared to each other. And this size, this sorry, this piece, this piece, and this piece are all the same size. But you'll notice that this piece is not the same size as this piece. Okay. So if we're talking about three fourths, what that looks like is this. I'll do this fairly quickly if I can. So when we talk about three-fourths, what we're really talking about is three out of the four pieces. Sorry for the rust job on the coloring. Whatever makes your viewing experience more pleasurable uh, is what I aim to do. Um, Next, if we were talking about two-thirds, it would look like this. And I'm just going to pause the camera so you don't have to watch me color this. 
And ta-da, with the magic of video, we've magically made this um, two-thirds represented. So as you can see, here we have one, two, three out of the four are colored. So that's the three. The three refers to these, one, two, three. And the four refers to how many total pieces we have. Here we have two out of three that are colored green. So one is colored green, two is colored green, so that refers to the two. And the three refers to the number of equally sized pieces my whole rectangle is divided into. But here's the question. Which one's bigger? It's really difficult to tell. Now you might be able to eyeball it and say, well, this one looks a bit bigger. And that could work, provided your drawing is done to scale and you've taken a lot of time and effort in drawing it. But most people don't, and in some fractions, it's a lot more difficult to tell. So how can we prove it? We prove it by changing those fractions so that we're, they're not differently, um, they don't have different denominators anymore. Um, you can think of it in this way. If I had 50 pesos and 50 Canadian dollars, which is, more, which is worth more? Well, in order to figure that out, you're either going to need to change your pesos to Canadian dollars or change your Canadian dollars to pesos. Then you can tell which one's worth more. Um, if my friend weighs 91 kilograms and I weigh 205 pounds, who weighs more? Well, you're not going to be able to tell that until you convert either your pounds to kilograms or your kilograms to pounds. So that's why we have to make it so we're comparing apples to apples instead of apples to oranges. So comparing fourths to thirds is like comparing apples to oranges. Um, we need to compare them so that they have the same denominator and we're comparing apples to apples. So how can we do that? Well, if we further divide our rectangles, we can actually make these into what are called equivalent fractions. So I'm going to divide this into three equal pieces this way. And with my ruler, I'm just going to divide it like that. Oops, pen didn't work. Let's try that again. One, two, three. And on this one, I'm going to take my ruler and I'm going to divide it into uh, fourths. So let's see here. Trust me that I've done the math already to know where to put my uh, to know where to put my marks here. I wouldn't lie to you. Okay. So now, as you can see, you can look at these rectangles two different ways. If you look at the columns the way we originally had them, and I'll just zoom in here at this. Okay, if you look at the columns the way we originally had them, we'd have one, two, three out of four. Okay, so if we look at columns, we have four equal slices. However, if we look at the rows, the horizontal ones, we have three equal slices. Okay, so horizontally, this is divided into thirds. Vertically, it's divided into fourths. If we look at this one, we notice that Vertically is divided into thirds, horizontally is divided into fourths. So now, in both of these, you will find that we have 12 equally sized pieces. So this piece is the same size as this piece, this piece is the same as this piece, etc. This piece is the same as this piece, this piece is the same as this piece. They both have 12 equally sized pieces. So now, our denominator here is out of 12. And the same goes for this. Okay. Note that this piece isn't the same shape as this one. Um, however, if you were to squash it, uh, they would end up being the same, same size because they are equally sized in each one. Okay. So we have 12 equally sized pieces here. And now we can count. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 out of the 12 that are colored. In this one, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 that are colored. So now we can say, okay, I've got 9 twelfths here. 
here I've got eight twelfths. I haven't changed the amount of orange that I've put on here. I haven't changed the amount of green I've put on here. But suddenly, because the denominators are now the same, I can easily tell that 9 is bigger than 8. So 3 fourths is the same thing as 9 twelfths. 2 thirds is the same thing as 8 twelfths. These are called equivalent fractions. So 3 fourths is equivalent to 9 twelfths. 2 thirds is equivalent to 8 twelfths. We've proven that by dividing our original rectangle uh, once more. And now we have 12 equally sized pieces in each rectangle. So we can say with certainty and being able to prove it that 3 fourths is actually bigger than or greater than 2 thirds. We've done that because we know that 9 twelves, 9 pieces out of 12, is more than 8 pieces out of 12. So that is a way that you're able to represent fractions and show that one is bigger than the other, one is less than the other, etc. Okay, and we'll just pause for a moment.